Peter, James, John, Matthew, Andrew, Philip, everyone. Much has been done already. Already the people I told you to go to, they believe they say God in heaven. You don't have to go to the children of Israel arguing about whether there's God or there's no God. All the people have done that preliminary work. They believe there is God. Not only that, we know that Messiah cometh already. They know the prophecy that the Messiah is coming. They know some basic things already. You are not going to people that are totally neutral, totally literate, according in the word of God. They know there is a heaven. They know there is a hell already in the land of Israel. And all you need to do now is to show them how to move out of the path that leads to perdition, that leads to hell, and direct them onto the path that leads to heaven. Other people have labored. Think about it in our country here. For example, most of the people already believe there is God. You don't have to go on evangelism and be convincing the majority of people. There may be some isolated people who will say whether there's God or not. They are the minority. They are negligible. But the majority of people already, somebody else has taught them. They already know there is God. And the people already know that Jesus Christ died and he was buried and he rose again. Other people have done that preliminary work. And the rest for us now is just to go and tell them the significance of that resurrection of Jesus Christ unto their lives. That's why Jesus Christ said, other people have labored already. And you are going into their labor so that you can then harvest them into the kingdom of God. It's, you know, it's just like you. Uh, we have um, some young people, they go to the university. And the, the lecturers at the university, they need to understand that they are not starting from the scratch. Already those young people, somebody else taught them the alphabet. Somebody else taught them how to put the words together. Somebody else taught them how to write good English. Somebody else taught them how to make some preliminary things. And therefore, these other lecturers, what do they do? They just make use of what other people have done in the lives of these young people. That's what the Lord is telling us. Other people have labored already. And think about the printing of the Bible. Think about translating the Bible from Hebrew and Greek and translating it to English language and then our local languages. Other people have done that already. Much has been done by other people. All we need to do now is take that Bible already available and take that word already available and go to the people and tell them it's a simple word. Other people have done the greater work and the most difficult work. We now go to them with the gospel. If we don't do it, the, uh, the, the result is, the consequence is, the harvest that is ripened already will be wasted, will be lost. It will not be lost. Amen. We're going to do it. Number two, it will be that the sinner's blood will be required on in our hands if we're, neg if we're negligent. In Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Look up here for a moment. What if you are employed as a guard, as a watchman, as a security officer? And then you are told you are the security officer. Now, you are watching over all the six here. This is your work. And the letter of appointment has been given to you. Or you have been spoken to verbally that you are the watchman, you are the guard, you are the security officer. If you go to sleep, or if you go to do some other good, good things, not bad things, but you are not at your post. 
and you are not securing, watching over. The things you are told to watch over, and all those things are stolen away, precious things. Then you'll be called to question. And then there'll be a penalty upon you. It's like the Lord is telling us, I've given it to you already. I've told you already that you are a watchman over the souls of the people. Now, you know that in the New Testament, even we are told that language is used. And what does the Bible say? Put your finger in Ezekiel. Your finger in Ezekiel. And come to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And I'm reading there from verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls as they that must give account. The part I want you to look at, they watch over your souls. They watch over your souls. And they will give account. The Lord has already appointed the leader that you are watching over souls. But then he appoints every believer that the people around you who do not know the Lord, you are watching over them. This one must not go to hell. And it's very simple. It's not in your strength, it's not in your power that you're going to pull them into the kingdom. It's just the power of the world. You just open your mouth. My friend, Jesus died for you. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to suffer the consequences of your sin, either here on earth or in eternity, beyond the grave. How can I do it? If you will just come to the Lord, confess your sin, turn away from them, very simple, within five minutes, ten minutes, He will forgive you. You'll be saved. He'll write your name in the book of life. And you'll be secured. That's all. And if you didn't do that to tell them and to warn them and to bring them to the Lord, if they are lost, you'll, you're going to give account. That means then the consequence of neglecting personal evangelism is that their blood will be required at you. And we're back in Ezekiel chapter 3, son of man. I have made thee a watchman over the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. That's all. So simple. Hear the word and the Lord will not fail. He'll give you the word. Now you hear the word from his mouth and then you give them warning. And they're willing to listen if you're willing to speak. They're willing to hear who is not willing to hear how he will not perish. How he will not be condemned. How you will not die in sin. How you will not go to hell. How you will not suffer forever and ever. You test people, my friend, come. I want to show you how you will never suffer in your life again. It's all ears I want to hear. I want to tell you how you'll be happy. Happy from now until you die. And then how you will secure a good place in heaven after you are dead. He will want to hear. I want to tell you something. I want to show you how the devil will not have power over your life anymore until you die. Come and tell me. I want to hear. I want to tell you how, the, how something can be a help to you. And you'll be so helped and lifted over the stormy waters of life. I'm all ears. I want to hear. Everybody wants to know. If you will go and give them the good news, the glad tidings, the gospel, that Jesus Christ died for them, and they ought to be saved, they don't have to die. You are a watchman over them. Then it says in verse 18, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. His blood will I require at thine hand. And that means then, if we don't tell them, they are going to be lost. We're going to tell them. I said we're going to tell them. And our reward is going to be great. In Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Another reason why we need to go out very quickly and tell them is that this is another consequence now that if we are ashamed of Christ here on earth, he too will be ashamed of us. Ashamed of us. But I, I don't understand why some people will say, really, I am ashamed. I'm ashamed. I cannot, I cannot tell other people about Christ. And I'm asking them, what are you ashamed of? I say, are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. Are you happy? Yes, I am happy. 
Is your life fulfilled in Christ? Yes, it's fulfilled. Does God answer your prayer? Yes, he answers my prayer. What are you ashamed of? It just, I ask you, are you married? Yes, I am married. Tell that a friend there that you are a married man. Oh, I'm ashamed. Ashamed? Oh, you go to that friend. Friend, do you know that I'm married? Now, I say, are you successful in life? Have you got a certificate? Have you gone to school? Have you graduated? Oh, yes. Tell that friend over there. Do you know that I've graduated already? Are you ashamed of that? Of course, no. Has your sin been forgiven? Yes. Tell that person there. My sin is forgiven. How were you forgiven? I confess my sin. I turned away from my sin. And Jesus forgave me. I am healthy. From since I gave my life to the Lord for about you know five years now, maybe you're saying that uh, the Lord has been keeping me strong and healthy. Tell your friend over there. Do you know that uh, for five years now, since I came to this Jesus, I'm healthy, I'm strong, and I'm very very happy. Who is ashamed of a thing like that? And then you tell them He did it for me. He will do it for you. It's not, there's no excuse at all to be ashamed of what Christ can do and what Christ wants to do in your life. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Whoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I pray you will not be ashamed. Another thing is the loss of the soul winner's reward. The loss of the soul winner's reward. You see, if you are not witnessing, you're losing quite a lot. You're losing the reward of the servants of God. You're losing the reward of being a soul winner in Matthew chapter 13, verse 12. Matthew chapter 13, verse 12. For whosoever has to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. It's saying for those who have, and if you read the whole parable, those who have actually toiled, and they have done what they ought to do. And those who have come to the Lord, and they are obedient to the Lord, and faithful to the Lord. And in your faithfulness to the Lord, the Lord will give you the reward of faithfulness. That's what he's saying. Whosoever has to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not, from him shall be taken, if, taken away. Even that he has, that he is, if you are not making use of your privilege, and your possibilities, your potentials, and the, uh, the, the word of God, the opportunity you have got to tell other people, then there will be no reward. Even what you seem to have will be taken away from you. I pray that will not happen to you. And you know that the people who are not evangelizing, they, even, they are hurting themselves. You are not telling other people about the Lord. You are not excited about the Lord. Your prayers are going to be in the because you see, and you say, God, do this for me, do this for me. And then the Lord is saying, the one I did for you, have you told anybody? Have you made that opportunity, privilege, open to all the people? I've blessed you, I've saved you, I've healed you, I've provided for you, I've done quite a lot for you. Have you ever opened your mouth to tell other people, other people who are suffering like you were suffering? Other people who are unfortunate in life, like you are unfortunate in life, I helped you. I lifted you up. You should have told them so that they too, they'll be able to have what you have got. And if you have not, if you are, if you are not telling them, then when you cry unto the Lord, your prayers are ended. In Proverbs chapter 21 verse 13. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 13. It says, Whoso stoppeth, whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but he shall not be heard. Whosoever stoppeth his ear from hearing the word, uh, from uh, the cries of the people, that is the need of the people. The people that need to hear about Christ the Savior, about Christ the Lord, about Christ, that is the, the reason for reconciliation with God. The bridge between the sinful man and the holy God. You stop your ears from telling them. Being concerned 
about your predicament. Then it says, you also you will cry, and then you will not be heard. That's the reason we ought to actually rise up and do what the Lord has called us to do. We will do it in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 1, verse 14. It tells us, Romans 1, 14. Um, Gator, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, I am debtor. Not just I was, but even to the present time, I am. You think about a man like Paul the Apostle, from the time that the Lord called him, he started preaching the gospel, telling other people about the Lord. And yet he still said, every moment of the way, forgetting what he had done, I'm still today a debtor, both to the barbarians and to the Greeks, both to the wise and to the unwise. That means both to the intelligent and to the unintelligent, both to the illiterates and to the elites, to the educated, both to the high and the low, both to the people in the city, the wise, and then those in the rural areas, in the villages, the unwise. He said in verse 15, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. I am ready. And you think about all the places he had been. If you have read the Acts of the Apostles, Jerusalem, Iconium, and then to all the other places, Thessalonica. And yet he said, yes, there's still a place on the map I've not gone to. And that is Rome. And I'm a debtor to the people at Rome as well. And I'm willing to come unto you. And I'm ready to come unto you. Where have you been? Of all the places on the map, have you ever taken the map of your own city or the map of your own local government or the map of your region or the map of your state and then you pinpoint all those places on the map? Look at this, you've not gone there. 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 Virtually, you've not gone out of your house. You go from the house to the church, from the church to the house, from the house to the office, from the office to the house, no other place. Why don't you look at all those places on the map and say, I'm a debtor to the people at Rome, I'm a debtor to the people over here, I'm a debtor to the people over there, and then plan to pay the debt that you owe so that you'll take the gospel, the word of God, unto them. That's why it says in verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew false and also to the Greek. I come to point number two. In point number two, the compelling necessity of personal evangelism. Compelling necessity of personal evangelism. Already I've explained to you that personal evangelism is a compelling necessity for every believer. That is one-on-one, -on -one, talking to people, preaching to people, 